Would you turn to 1 John? The first epistle of John. In chapter 1. Glory. You know, in the book of Hosea, the word says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? That's lack of understanding, lack of wisdom, lack of vision. People are destroyed because they don't understand the ways of God. They don't understand the strategies of the enemy. And they're easily swayed and deceived. And they get put out of position. And position spiritually, again, we've talked about this before, is everything. You must be spiritually positioned or you get easily swayed. Amen? In verse 5 in chapter 1, would you read it with me? This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Amen? Amen. God is light. So gray is darkness. Does everybody get it? Yes. You can't be in a gray area. Amen. People that are in a gray area are in danger. It's called the fence. And remember, who owns the fence? The devil. <laughs> the devil owns the fence. So if you're on the fence, you're headed to hell. It's real simple. Well, I just don't know which one to choose. I haven't chosen any of them. I haven't chosen God or the devil. Well, if you haven't chose God, you chose the devil. Amen. It's real simple. And it says, this message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So any association with evilness or darkness is going to contaminate us. If we say that we have fellowship with Jesus, but yet walk in darkness, we what? We lie. So if you say you're a believer, but you're not a follower, you are a liar. And that's what God looks at. So he says, you're not mine because you're not following me. Amen? If you believe something, you follow it. You can't say you believe it and don't follow it, then you don't believe it. If we say that we have fellowship with Jesus, but yet we walk in darkness, we lie and don't practice the truth. Wow. So if we're not putting truth into practice, then we're putting something else into practice called deception amen if we walk in the light as jesus is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin how many of all know sin will contaminate you amen sin is actually the presence of evil so when you touch and agree with darkness you open yourself up to exchange the presence of god for the presence of evil if we say that we have no sin, we, we are deceived. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. See, truth is light. It's life. It always exposes death, sin, and deception. If we confess our sins, in other words, if we expose them, confession is exposure. If you're not willing to expose your sins to God, then you're not his. Because sin separates you from him. Sin is the presence of evil. That's why we're to confess our sins every day. Well, I don't sin. Well, baloney. Everybody sins. You wake up in the morning and sin. There's no such thing as white lies. <laughs> I... <laughs> People, I hear people, yeah, they only practice white witchcraft. What the heck? Witchcraft is witchcraft, man. They pray to the dead. They have no understanding. If we confess our sins, if we expose our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that righteousness can become a fruit of our life because only those whose fruits are righteousness access eternal life. If your fruit is not righteousness, then you will have no access. But I am a Christian. No, you're not. Because Christians promote the fruit of righteousness. Does everybody get it? 
If we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So, in other words, his truth is not in us. It's amazing because we are in end times. And there's something that the Spirit shared with me this morning. And, and one of the things he said, he said to me, I heard the word confusion. He said, the enemy is releasing so much confusion. It is end time confusion. We are in the days of confusion. And great confusion. Confusion is associated not only when there's delusion, there's confusion. When there's lack of understanding, there's confusion. That's why many people are on the fence. That, listen, there is a falling away going on right now. There's a falling away. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Is everybody there? It's on page 1360? No. <laughs> In my Bible? <laughs> Glory! In verse 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello? He's coming, isn't he? Amen. He's on his way. And believe me, he's not hitchhiking. He's not waiting for a bus. He owns the whole system. Amen? Amen. <laughs> now, concerning the gathering... Together, to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind. Why? Because things are going to come. What he's saying, don't be shaken. Don't get confused. Or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Do you know that how much confusion is going on? There are, I want to say organizations, belief systems, religions, that say Jesus already came. That revelation is already done with. Boy, they ain't surprised. Most people don't even know about what's going on in the world. They got no idea. They're so busy trying to sustain and survival in their own life, they're not even looking to God to find out what's up. They use the Bible now as a bookmark uh, uh, and, and a bookend. It's one of those big ones, you know, big letters, and they put it as a book. In. Verse 3, let no, no one what? Deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the what? Falling away comes first, and I'm telling you, it is happening now. It's increasing more and more and more. There's a falling away. Why? Because it's end time confusion. And the man of sin, who is antichrist, is going to be revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and people are going to believe that he's God because they're confused. I mean, you know, you, you got, uh, believe this or not, this is quite incredible, but you, you have the Catholic church and it's not about people, Hello? Everybody must have a relationship with them. But you got the Catholic Church that owns a, the most powerful infrared camera telescope in the world, and it's called Lucifer. And you know what they're doing? They have seen aliens, what they call aliens. They've been watching them. They're expecting them to come. And they're considering that they are going to bring salvation to the world. This is their train of thought because there's confusion. These aliens are nothing but demons with technology and fallen angels. They actually are believing in this. But of course, uh, those that are going to the church don't understand the, the in-depthness of the ruling leaders and what's going on. Does nobody understand that? They don't understand. These are, these are, I mean, they're good people that are going to this church and this fellowship. And they're going to do the ritual Sunday service to feel good about themselves. But no understanding, no truth. No studying. No nothing. A couple, I can play dominoes better than you. <laughs> little money in the thingy. little kneeling. And they're back to serving devils again. I used to be there. I was an altar boy. Yeah, man. I used to love high mass. It gave me an opportunity to get to the wine. 
I was an altar boy so I can get out of class. I was a heathen. That's what I was. I was deceived with confusion. I didn't know you could have a relationship with the king of glory. I didn't know anything about it. I thought you had to go to church to be a Christian. Most people go to church that are not Christians. Because they're not practicing what is Christ-like. This is end-time confusion. There's much delusion. There's all kinds of things that are happening right now. People have no idea. They're not going to know whether the devil is showing up in an image like Jesus or it's the true Jesus. They don't even know it. Man, I don't know, about 10 years ago, there was a, an image down in Tampa. It was um, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was on a, on a big building. People were going down there and throwing flowers and lighting candles. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, there were people that I knew that were Christians. They were going down there. Did you see that? Yes, dummy. It's called an end time delusion. What are you doing? People are still praying to the dead. Mary is gone. She's not hearing one prayer. No one comes to the Father except for through the Son. To the Father. What the heck you want to pray to somebody dead and ain't going to answer you when you can pray to the one who created you? That's deception. That's doctrines of devils. People don't get it. And they wonder why they can't overcome things. They wonder why they struggle in life. Look at peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Torment is terrible, isn't it? Oh, glory. Are you ready for more? Sure got hot in here, didn't it? Are you hot, bro? I'm hot, man. Is anybody else hot in here? Yeah! Get hot! Okay. Verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains will do until he is taken out of work. He who restrains is the body of Christ. Jesus, see the body of Christ is here, so Jesus is here. Amen? He's the head, we're the body now. So the body of Christ is what's holding back the powers of darkness. And once we are removed, which is known as a rapture, which is the next feast to be fulfilled, all hell will, there will be nothing to restrain. You think it's bad now? Wait. It says, and then the lawless one will be, verse 8, will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. You know how many believers don't even think that there is a devil? So many, you know how many people don't even think that there's a hell? They don't even think, oh, I'm a good person. Well, you're going to cook. Good, good people cook. Righteous people don't. See, the reason why people say I'm a good person is because they're looking at what they've done. Everything must come from him, not from us. It's not what I've done. It's everything he's done. Again, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who will perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. See, you and I got to love truth. I love truth. Even when it hurts, I love truth. Even when it exposes me, I love truth. Even when it convicts me, I love truth. Why? Because truth is life. And after you've been slapped with truth, love comes. <laughs> And it says that they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, you got to love truth to get home. Because truth is the guideline home. And if you practice the truth, you get home. Other than that, you ain't going home. In verse 11. And it says, for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they shall believe the lie. In other words, God's going to allow them. 
there's a time after the body of Christ is removed, which is the next event which is going to happen, which can happen any time. It's the next feast to be fulfilled. He's going to allow delusion where people are going to be more confused and delusioned, deceived, that we're going to actually, they're going to believe any kind of lie that the devil sends. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why? Because who you serve when you die is where you go. It says, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved, by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, everyone has a choice. God does not interfere with our free will. Never. He lays it there and he says, you want to pick it up? Come on. He stretches out his hand. He said, grab hold of this if you will. He went to the man that was bound by leprosy. He stretched out his hand. Do you want to be healed? See, everything is available for me and you. Nothing is withheld. It's what we're willing to accept, what we're willing to receive, and what we're willing to believe to execute. Is everybody okay? So there is a falling away. There, 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 there are two things that are initiating falling away, delusion and confusion. Much Confusion, much delusion. We are in an end time confusion right now. People are losing their identity of who they are. In fact, many people are in confusion and still don't know who they are. They're looking for movies, heroes, basketball players, football players, artists, rock and rollers, rappers, whatever else. They're looking for people, for heroes to gain identity because they've lost their own. Or they're confused and don't even know who they are. That's what Christ offers. He offers identity. That's why it says, be Christ-like. David says, when I awake, in other words, when I cleave this place, I'm going to be like you. I'm going to be like you. Is everybody okay? James chapter 3. Three thirteen. And time confusion. Days of confusion. We are in them. In verse thirteen, would you read it with me? James three thirteen. Who is wise and understanding among you? We're gonna need wisdom and understanding. But this wisdom is not from below or from the world. It's from above. It's the wisdom and understanding that is directed by the Holy Spirit. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter, envy, and what? Self-seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. See, the devil loves to bring wisdom too. So people, this wisdom promotes self. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. That's why the world is in tremendous confusion. People are exchanging a wisdom from above for the wisdom of the world. They're out to promote themselves. Self-exaltation. But the wisdom is from God, from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of what? 
Righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So there will always be a fruit of righteousness. Confusion is refuted by wisdom, from, by the wisdom of God and understanding. Amen? You know, confusion is also associated with compromise, uncertainty. People are unstable because of confusion. There's an instability about them. In Ezekiel 14. In Ezekiel, in verse 1, it says, Some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me, and a word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their where? In their hearts. Ezekiel 14 and verse 3. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I myself be inquired of at, of at all by them? In other words, Idols will always cause stumbling. Any stumble that comes is associated with some kind of an idol. An idol is anything that is in between you and God. Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus is the Lord God, every one of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity and, come, and then comes to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols, that I may seize the house of Israel by their heart because they are all astray from me by their idols. In other words, they've walked away from God. Because of the idols. How many of y'all know you can be the idol? Self is the idol. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, repent, turn away from your idols, and turn your faces away from all your abominations. Why? Idols promote confusion. Idols promote confusion. In fact, idols even speak. Why? Because where there's an idol, there's a spirit. It is a demonic spirit. Go to Zechariah 10. Zechariah 10 and verse 2. Is everybody okay? Remember, we're being influenced in all kinds of areas. I can't stop emphasizing the arena of influence. And if we don't begin to look what's influencing us, we're going to constantly stay in the cycle of deception. We'll be in an area of confusion. And when things start happening, we won't know what to do, how to do it, or when to do it. And that's why it's important to have wisdom and understanding. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 2, it says what? For the idols do what? Speak what? Delusion. Idols speak delusion. And diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore the people wend their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd or someone to tell them. There's no shepherd to guide them. Listen, right now we've got a lot of uh, uh, feel good. Feel good organizations, congregations. Feel good. Don't worry about sin. Just feel good. That's Satan's doctrine. Do what you feel like. Just go ahead and do anything you want. It's okay. In fact, I was watching a testimony yesterday where uh, this, uh, this evangelist man, a uh, very powerful man of God, his daughter was in uh, seminary school. We call it cemetery school. But. And he pulled her out because the professor said, now that you are saved, you can go ahead and do anything. Yes, you can sleep with your boyfriend now. You can go out and drink. You can go out and party. Well, obviously, he pulled her out of that place. This is what's being taught in some of the seminary schools. It's okay. That lie of once saved, always saved is a doctrine of devils and people are going to, and those that are preaching it and approving it, there's a lot of blood on their hands. 
Jesus never said, go ahead out and serve the devil. Look at Judas. Where did he end up? And he walked with Jesus. He was right here with him. He was saved. He believed him. He followed him. And where did he end up? He betrayed him and ended up in hell. Idols do speak. Why? Because idols are attached to spirits. And spirits are promoting delusion, which is confusion. Your fight and my fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places. Voices that are spirits. In Psalm 95. Hallelujah. That's why we have a wonderful saying. Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you to lie? Who told you to cheat? Who told you to steal? Who told you to fornicate? Who told you it was okay? Who told you that? Well, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. No. Every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. We are spirits in a physical body. That's why you're actually looking out through these eyes. You're actually using this body. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Only God can do that. You know what I'm saying? But one day this body is going to go back to the dust and you're going to go up or down. There is no in between. You mean I'm not going to purgatory? There's no such thing. It's a lie from hell. <laughs> you think you're going to wait? What are you going to do? Repentance while you're in hell? No. Once your last breath is up, you're gone. It's over with. Psalm 95 and verse 1. Read with me, please. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. Come on, read it with me. Do not what? Harden your hearts as in the rebellion. If you will hear his voice, if you're not willing to put an ear to hear, then your heart is hardened. As in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. Verse 10, for 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. Why? Because they were in confusion. Why? Because they allowed idols into their heart. And idols speak what? Delusion. Where there's delusion, there's confusion. So I swore in my wrath they, will, they shall not enter my rest. Wow. Hearts hardened in rebellion. Not willing to hear his voice of protection. They are holding on to idols, desires in the heart, which brings confusion. They can't rest. They, in other words, they, they have a hard time resting in the presence of God and the promises of God. Because they're always battling confusion. Let me share with you that torment is confusion. And confusion is torment. In Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. 
Now, o Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God, your fathers, has given you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Pur, for the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baal of Pur. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today. See, it's our responsibility to hold fast to him. Amen. Every one of you. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful. Everyone say, be careful. Be careful. To observe them. For this is your what? Wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon him. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law which I set before you today? The nation now is called the kingdom of God. Only take heed to yourself and diligently Keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, unless they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and to your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children." Wisdom and understanding brings discernment. Say it with me. Wisdom and understanding bring discernment. Discernment will tell you what will happen before it does. Does everybody get it? This is how God wants me and you to be. That's why the Spirit tells us things to come. Discernment will tell you things and what will happen before it does happen. If you're walking in the spirit, if you're spiritually positioned. Now, the voice of the stranger always promotes confusion. It promotes delusion. It promotes deception. Would you go to Matthew 24? In verse 36. And the Lord begins to speak about his coming and things that will happen. He talks about the beginning of the sorrows, tribulation, and great tribulation, which we are in the, coming to the end of beginning of the sorrows and getting ready to enter tribulation. It says in verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. You do not know what hour. In other words, he's talking about this is a confusion right here. And in this confusion, what is happening, people are being led astray. In other words, it talks about they will be drinking, partying, marrying, and so forth. How many, listen, think about how bad confusion is. We have a confusion right now of called gender. What great confusion. It's called gender. People don't know whether they're a man or a woman. I think they're flipping a coin and said, I think I'll be a boy today. Or I'll be a girl today. Or maybe I'll just be both. These are influences of demonic spirits 
changing the course of what God has created a human being to be. Remember, God did not create Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. Amen? And there is such confusion. Think about this. What confusion of gender? Those are demons. Spirits. Psalm 111. This is a part of the end time, the falling away. And the word tells us those who practice such things, homosexuality, lesbianism, transvestitism. <laughs> you can look that one up. And when you find it, let me know. <laughs> Will not enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> Psalm 111. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 111. Are we there? Amen. Glory to God. Verse 10. Let's speak it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I can't imagine anyone going to the Lord and saying, Oh, Lord, uh, I know you created me as a man, but I'm thinking about becoming a woman. Can I have some wisdom on that? Oh, got it. Dummy, deceived, delusional, confused. Pick your Bible up. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. Seek out what truth is. Look for him. He's waiting for each and every one of us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Fear of the Lord means reverence, honor, and respect. He's always before you. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Talk about people losing their identity or have never even found it. Why? Because of confusion. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure. 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 Hardship is a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Look at this. Verse 4. Read it with me. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. If you're not in the battle, you become a casualty, right? And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he cannot be crowned unless he competes according to the rules. <laughs> so you must compete according to the rules, right? Listen. Deception will cause delusion, will cause confusion. That's where people are entangled. These entanglements are results of confusion. In other words, loss of identity. Loss of identity. Many people don't even know who they are. They're still trying to find who they are. Or what's happened is they sold their identity for fame and fortune. Does everybody get that? Look at how many um, musicians have sold out their lives, given, sold their soul to become famous. And how many of them have died and ended up in hell? The voice of deception is the voice of confusion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we are in the end times where there is great confusion. It is end time confusion. The word tells us that the days are evil. If the, the days are evil, that means there's delusion, confusion. The falling away has begun. In 1 Corinthians 15. In verse 33. 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Would you read it with me? Do not be what? Deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not be what? Deceived. What does it say? Evil company corrupts good habits. So you got to be careful what you associate with. People that are associations. Again, I don't have friends. I have brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters are those who do the will of God. Friends don't do the will of God. Why? Because the devil is easy to use them to betray you. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to what? Righteousness. And do not sin. For some do not have this knowledge of God. I speak this to their shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised and with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it what? Dies. That means you must come to the end of yourself so that you can become alive. That's why Jesus gave the formula. Deny yourself, pick up the sword, pick up the cross and follow. We no longer live for us, we live for him. See, you can't bring, you can't bring God into your world. God brings us into his world. And then he changes everything else to bring into his world, as long as we stay in his world. But when you step out of his world, believe me, every demon around is going to come and get you. They're trying to deceive you with confusion, bring oppression, bring deception, and offer you something to exchange your inheritance or your birthright from God. Associations promotes emotional confusion. Why? Because people begin to rely on what they feel instead of what truth is. Of course, if you don't have truth in you, you're going to rely on how you feel. And your feelings can bring you all the way to hell. They do not follow the truth. They only follow feelings. In James chapter 1, end time confusion. You know what the thing is, is people are confused at what to serve. They don't know whether to serve themselves or God. They don't know whether to serve man or God. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's speak it. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Cursed. Yeah. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. In other words, says no to sin. Says no to himself. And says yes to God. For when he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires or idols. And what? Enticed. So what the enemy does is get your attention. He starts with deception. Then he brings delusion and promotes confusion. And then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to the presence of evil, which is called sin. And when the presence of evil or sin is full grown, it brings forth its end result is death. Representing hell. So he says, don't be deceived, my beloved children, my beloved brethren. Temptation, again. Everybody gets tempted. We're tempted every day. But we overcome temptation with God's presence, with his truth with his blood, with your testament. Actually, you overcome with knowing who you are. Does everybody get it? That's how it always starts. You overcome by your true identity of who you are in Christ. That's how it starts. Because you're not going to speak anything from Christ unless you're in Christ. And your identity is in Christ. Or else you will grumble, you will complain, you'll look at everything else to try to resolve circumstances but Christ that's why the Bible tells us that we must abide we abide in prayer the word we abide in praise and worship we abide in fellowship 
there must be a love for the house of God. There must be a love for God, for his truth in his house. It's important. That's why people go astray. Romans 8. All glory. Days of confusion. Romans 8. Verse 5. Would you read it with me? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And the spiritually minded doesn't mean, you know, I hear people say, I'm very spiritual. And they got a beer in their hand and a cigarette. Playboy underneath their arm. Yeah, man, I'm spiritual. No, you're not. There's a lot of people that say they're spiritual because they seek the spirit realm. The problem is they're seeking the wrong things. They go to psychics. They read their fortune cookies. They read their horoscopes. I am very spiritual. You're very stupid. <laughs> Hello. And you're very deceived. You're in confusion and delusion. And you've opened yourself up to demons that are now invading you and they're living in you rent free. And that's why that torment is there. That confusion is there. That frustration is there. What do I do? What do I do? Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. I'm telling you there is a falling away that is going to increase more and more and more. It's time to grab hold of God with both hands. Amen? Both hands. It says this, For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's the spiritual mind of Christ. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed it can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen? You can't please God. You mean if I don't have a relationship with God, I can't please Him? Right. Because you're not producing the fruit of righteousness. You're eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is promoting death. You're not eating from the tree of life, which promotes righteousness, where you have given up your life for his life. You are now living and breathing in him. My life is no longer mine. It is no longer I exist, but he that exists in me. In Colossians chapter 2. Why? Because we are in the days of confusion greatly. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2, starting at verse 1. Let's. I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of what? Understanding and to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this, I say, lest any should deceive you with what? Persuasive words. For though I am absent in flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, everyone say beware, beware. lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the prince, basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead body, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power. So where are we complete? In him. If you're not in him, you're not complete. And the enemy easily accesses us then. Amen. In other words, we must maintain our identity. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second, second Corinthians chapter five. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 17. Let's read it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. In Christ means you are walking in the spirit with him. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. One of the reasons why people are still allowing the old to dominate the new is because they're still in confusion. Or they haven't let go. They still have not removed all the idols from their heart. See, we must get to a place where we are sold out no matter what. I'm sold out. It's not, listen, you don't look to where you, when you're ready. Oh, I'm ready now. No, you're not. It's got nothing to do with being ready. You make the choice. That free will, it says, I want to be sold out. I'm willing to be sold out. I'm willing to. You make that free will choice, and God will meet you every time. Every time. And I'm going to close at Psalm 15. Do not lose your identity. In fact, get your identity solid of who you are. And let's speak this together. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill, he who walks uprightly, works righteousness, and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil in his neighbor. Nor does he take up a what? Approach against his friend. In whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. One of the things that confusion will always do is promote instability. Unstability. And you can't trust someone that's not stable, can you? Amen? God wants to get us to a place where we are solid, we are stable, unmovable. No matter what comes across our path because there's going to be a lot of things coming that's going to try to move us. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray, Lord, that the seed that's been imparted be protected by the blood of Jesus and grow and bear fruit in each and every one. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen.